Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sierra. I'm a first year medical student sharing my journey with you guys and trying to help you guys get to this point as well. Please hit that subscribe button if you have not already. We would love for you to join us. It has been so long since I've done a sit down talking video. I've been vlogging so much, but since it is back to school season and I know there's a lot of pre-meds out there who watch my videos, I decided to make a video for the pre-meds out there on how to prepare as a pre-med, give you my tips to help you on your journey to medical school and secure everything that you need to secure as a pre-medical student. So if you're interested, keep watching. talk a little bit about how to get a 4.0 in undergrad. I was really close to getting a 4.0. I got a 3.94 in undergrad. Um, I pretty much got all A's my entire undergrad career except a B plus in physics two and a B plus in biochem, unfortunately. But everything else I got an A in. First tip I wanna say is secure the A's in those like core classes or non-major classes like English and psychology, sociology. Well, if you are like a science major, whatever major you are, those extra classes that they make everyone take, religion, whatever it is, secure it in those because those are the classes that are gonna be easier than, you know, organic chemistry and physics. I know it's easier said than done, but if you can, don't slack around on those like easier classes because those are the classes you could be boosting your GPA up with if you get all A's in them. The second thing I would say is try to space out your harder science courses. So for me, I was taking like microbiology, organic chemistry, and physics all at the same time. But if you are not required to do anything, and if you are taking your time, then I would not shove all the hardest classes together in a semester or in two semesters. Definitely try to space out the classes if you can. That will allow you to focus on maybe just two of the hardest classes at once or one. So you're not doing all three at the same time or all four at the same time. You don't wanna be taking anatomy, orgo, biochem, studying for the, like that's too much. You, you shouldn't be doing all that at once. And also don't wait until your senior year to take all the harder ones because you're definitely probably gonna have less motivation and it'll just be a little harder. So try to get those in like maybe your sophomore and junior years. So another thing is you, you're gonna have to sacrifice some of that free time to study. And I feel like this especially comes into play freshman year where it's a big transition for some people to go from high school to now living maybe far away from home, doing everything on your own, and then immediately jumping into general chemistry and bio because they try to weed people out of the biology major and try to weed out the pre-meds. It could be a lot. I would definitely say don't get caught up in freshman year by just, you know, partying and hanging out with friends and forgetting to do schoolwork because that is basically what kind of happens to a lot of people when they start college. Like people always say like, dang, if I wouldn't have messed up my first semester or my first second semester, like a lot of people are very like, just chill because you're, you're having fun for the first time. You moved away from your house for the first time. You're young, you know, it's time to have fun. But you're gonna have to, if you wanna get those good grades, you might have to study some of the time and not always go out. Not saying that you shouldn't have a social life because I was one of those people who still had a social life and still got good grades. I was still going out every weekend. But there were certain times, like I remember for my school, the chemistry finals were always on Saturdays instead of every, well, everyone else only had it on weekdays. Ours were always on Saturday. So, you know, in December, it's the last week of the semester, everyone's about to go home. So everyone goes out that Friday because they're either done their finals or their next one isn't until Monday. But mine would always be on that Saturday at 8 a.m. So girl, you're gonna have to stay at home and study for that final and not go out so you can do well. That's just a major example because that's like a whole final, but like there's times where you might have to stay in and finish your questions, your homework, or you might be at the party pulling up Blackboard or pulling up your homework real quick doing it at a party. I've had to do that too. But you know, just don't slack on stuff just because you're having fun. Like just have a balance of both. The next thing I would say is do the simple, easier stuff in your science classes because that will help boost up your grade. Now I've had science classes where your only grade is a two test, that's it. You gotta do good on the test, that's your entire grade. But I've also had classes where your grade is made up of participation and homework questions and lab and all of these things together, research, whatever you're doing, 
So those are the things you gotta do well in because if tests are not your strong suit and you're doing poorly on the test, then you need to make up for it in other areas. I've had classes where I had like a low B the whole time, but then at the end of the year when they added in all the homework in the lab grade, it shot up to like a 95 and it was an A. Definitely do the smaller, easiest stuff. I know it's really hard to keep up with homework, especially, I don't know about you guys, but for me, my physics and chemistry classes always had the most homework. It always was questions, especially organic chemistry, had so much homework and it gets to be a lot. But honestly, just bang out the homework, just do it because at the end of the semester, when your grades ended up not being that well and you're like stressed about it, you're gonna wish you did that to bring you up a couple extra percent. Another big tip I have is to try to make friends within your classes. I know this is also easier said than done, but it's not, you're not always gonna have friends in every class. I've had classes where I didn't speak to one person the entire year. My anatomy class, I didn't have, I had like maybe one person I knew in that class. It's times where you're not gonna know anyone, but I would try to definitely make friends in your classes. For me, that was when I was taking physics and organic chemistry. At the same time, I'm saying for me, those were the hardest classes I took in undergrad and I was doing it at the same time. And friends were literally crucial for me because they're just motivating. We would all, literally I got so close to one girl that I'm still friends with now because every day after class we would just study or we would come together, do the homework together or review together after class and we would do that and we would just help each other out before tests, everything. We just helped each other out with everything because we all, it was hard for all of us. We all were struggling. So when you have that group of at least like maybe two or three people who's in your class, that can help you out tremendously. The last tip I have about securing that 4.0 in undergrad is to use your resources at your college. We're paying thousands of dollars to go to these universities. You might as well use the resources you have. Most college campuses have tutoring that's free because it's in it's free, but it's included in your tuition. So a lot of times they'll have tutoring for all the science classes or harder classes that you can go to and use. Like I never use my tutoring, but the tutoring is available and a really good option that you can use if you need it. Office hours, again, office hours isn't something that I usually went to, but office hours is a great resource um, and it'll especially help you out if it's a class you're struggling in. If you're going every week to these office hours where the professor knows you, they will definitely do what they can to help you. Those are just a couple of the resources, but I'm sure that every school has different things available for you to use. So use outside tools. There's so many outside resources you can use that can help you. And actually, I have an outside resource recommendation for you guys that I just learned about the other day. It is something called the Anatomy Bootcamp, and it is a new website that basically helps you use anatomy this website is really will be really good for other medical students so if you're a med school student watching this check out anatomy boot camp um it's also good for other schools like pa students all the schools that learn anatomy it will be good for you guys but this is also a tool that could be good for undergrad because most people take anatomy in undergrad and i was one of those people and anatomy was just something that i just didn't have a lot of time to sit there and study and memorize so i ended up somehow finessing it but didn't really learn that much but for you guys i would recommend if you are going to be taking anatomy in undergrad it's called anatomy boot camp here is the website and it basically just has a lecture video where someone goes over the notes and explains everything to you and you can download the pdf to follow the notes along while they're explaining it to you the thing i love about it the most is that it has a question bank where it goes over the questions that about stuff you just learned and it uses actual real pictures it's not cartoon pictures it's pictures of the real body so this can help people in undergrad if you're doing lab or in med school when we're always in anatomy lab it's actually pictures of cadavers real bodies it's not just cartoon pictures so it can really help you they have study groups you can join the facebook group to be with other students to help you learn things and it also has a daily warm up question so i just really think it's a great resource if you're struggling with anatomy it's just another tool that you can use it's completely free to sign up for and you can upgrade your account to get access to all the question banks but the good news is if you guys use my link that i'll be posting in the description box you'll be able to upgrade your account if you guys are interested just click the link in my bio you'll be able to sign up yeah so i really like it for example the upper and lower limbs i haven't started answering questions yet because 
I haven't reached this part of med school yet and I don't wanna just get everything wrong. It's really organized by chapter, you can click it. It'll have a whole lesson video where um, someone will be explaining everything to you in a video. It has a PDF outline and then the question banks. So definitely check that out if you're looking for a new resource or struggling with anatomy. It is something I highly recommend and I think that everyone can benefit from. Now I'm gonna be switching gears a little bit to my pre-med tips that are more focused on the med school aspect to prepare you to apply to medical school to make sure you, that you um, are prepared to apply to med school and that will help you with that route. My biggest advice is to get in touch with your pre-health or pre-med advisory committee if your school has one. My school, not trying to throw them under the bus, but we had one, but they didn't make it well known to bio students and other science students who usually are typically interested in going to med school. It was something that was sort of hidden that I didn't know about. And these committees are usually the committees who write your committee letter, which is the required letter of recommendation that most schools need in your application. If you don't get that, then you have to get your own letters of recommendations from individual professors. But, you know, that's kind of looked down upon. If your school has one, you're supposed to use it kind of. Some applications even ask me like, why did you choose not to use your committee letter? But the real reason was I just never knew about it because my school never told us about it. And of course, I probably should have done some digging on my own, but I also think that the school should make it readily available to you so students don't have to go digging so that you could just find it. If your school has one, definitely try to become a part of that as soon as you can because they can help you tremendously throughout the application process. There are some pros and cons to it, but Overall, I don't think it will hurt to try and they will be able to hook you up with special resources. They can help you with your personal statement, your secondaries, interview tips. They'll write the committee letter for you. There's just a lot of things that I know a committee could help you with that I've learned from friends who've used their committee. Whereas I had to do everything alone because I didn't go through anything with my school, which did bring in a lot of stress. So if you can lessen your stress by having this whole committee there, specifically just to help you get into med school, you should try to use it. The next thing is try to build up some relationships with your professor. Now, if you are using the committee letter, you won't need to get individual letters of recommendation. So your relationships with professors don't matter. But in the case that you do need them, I would just build those up just in case. You never know what you'll need a recommendation for. You'll never know what you might need a certain professor for. So just build up relationships with professors, especially those who have experiences in med schools. The more mentors, in your life and the more people who can help you along the journey the better so you're not doing everything alone so definitely try to build up some relationships with professors and even non-science related ones as well if you can because you never know even if they might not be able to help you directly like on your application you might just need someone in general who can help you in life or even if you become really close with an english professor they can help you finesse your personal statement now for extracurriculars also the same theme for all of this the theme of all this is start early for me, one of the detriments to my application, I feel like, was that I kind of did everything last minute and it felt a little rushed and like I had a lot to do. Whereas if you start early, start getting everything done early, it'll be a smoother process that can be more gradually over the four years instead of all at the same time at once. I did everything for mine at one time. I was studying for the MCAT at the same time as I was getting my volunteer hours. At the same time, I was taking biochem. At the, everything was at the same time and it was really rushed and difficult to do all that, secure my letters, write my personal statement. Whereas if you can spread it out, it might th make things a little bit less stressful or a little easier for you and might make your application be stronger and able to get into those really good schools. So try to get those non-medical volunteer hours in if you haven't done anything. Try to start now. Try to start getting medical experience in. For me, I had literally no medical volunteer experience up five months before I applied to med school. I had zero. So I had to spend 20 hours in a week in a hospital for free while studying for the MCAT, while still taking all my classes, trying to maintain my GPA because I had no experience working in a hospital. So I wasn't able to get a job. So I was volunteering for free, spending all that time commuting to a hospital, spending a lot of time there because I hadn't done it before. But if you do something more gradual, where you start your freshman or sophomore year, you might only have to spend like two to four hours a week in the hospital and slowly do it over the two years so that 
it looks like a consistent relationship. With me, I had to do 20 hours a week quickly in a three month period to try to get 150 hours before I applied. Start looking into research now. Like I said, you don't have to be a freshman doing this huge research project because half the battle being a freshman is adjusting to college life anyway. So don't think me saying this is, you must start doing all these extracurriculars, all these now. I'm just saying, keep in mind that if you do wanna apply one day, don't wait until the last minute like I did and try to rush everything and fit everything into your application. You wanna start earlier so that you can gradually add stuff in so that you have a lot of things to add and that you don't have to be as fresh as I was. Non-medical volunteer, um, medical volunteer, clubs, leadership positions, research, those are like the biggest extracurriculars that they look for in an application. So if you can start tackling some of those now and gradually add in more over time, you'll be set. You don't wanna do all five of those things at the same time. And last but not least, I would say some advice is do your research. That was what saved me during the med school process. I see you guys are already doing your research because you found my channel and you're looking here for some advice on how to prepare for medical school. So I was in the same boat. I was on YouTube looking up people I could go to for help. I was on Reddit. I was on Student Doctor Network. <laughs> I was on every forum you can think of doing my research. I only knew one person who applied to med school, one person in my entire life. That's it, I only knew one person and she told me basically all the things she did wrong and what I should do differently. And that was all I had. I literally had to do everything through research. I didn't have any family members, any friends, nobody in my family. Nobody I know has ever been to med school. No one I know has ever become a doctor, nobody. So I had to do all of that on my own, which is why research is so important. So I encourage you guys, if you don't have good people who you know, who can tell you all about the process, then do your research. I see you guys made the first step by coming here. That is a good idea. I'm always open for questions. If you have any questions about the journey, I know I didn't have that person to ask. I didn't have anyone to guide me, but I'm willing to be that person for you guys. So ask me if you have any questions about the process. Um, continue to do research, continue to look stuff up, but also remember to take it with a grain of salt. Don't take everything literally because there are neurotic people out there, as you guys probably have seen. There are people who try to scare you, who always say the worst things. But trust me, don't believe everything, but also do your research at the same time because it's good to know when you should be doing things and what med schools are looking for. That basically saved my life. If I didn't do any research, I would have done the application process all wrong. So yeah, just look up what schools are looking for in your application. Don't be afraid. I stayed on certain schools' websites to try to understand what they were looking for. So just go on those websites see what schools are looking for, see forms, see what other people have done. Yeah, I think that takes me to this end of the video. This is all my advice I have for all the pre-meds out there looking to apply to medical school. You guys are gonna get in, you're gonna kill it, you guys are gonna do well, everything's gonna work out, but I'm just here to give you some tips that I wish I had that I could have followed along the way so that it would have made my journey a little easier. And I'm also showing you guys how to secure that good GPA in undergrad, which is important in order to apply to med school so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if i left anything out leave your tips that you have down below ask any questions you have either dm me on my instagram email me leave it in the comments do whatever you want i thank you guys for being here i hope you enjoyed this video comment down below what you guys want to see from me next you know you guys i got the blogs coming for you guys and i'll see you in the next video bye guys